cycle to be called to follow Jesus. He was an old man, probably in his 40s or early 50s, to lead God's call. And in his gospel, as given to him by the Holy Spirit, he, in the second chapter, verse 16, is what we want to focus upon, talks about a man. And this is taken from the New International Version of our Bible. And it reads thusly, that's Matthew, second chapter, the 16th verse. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the mad guy, he was furious. And he gave orders to kill all of the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. We want to talk to you for a few moments on the title, Herod. Can you say that with me, that one word? Herod. Herod. I experienced something that I've not experienced since when I was maybe eight or nine years old. And this experience happened in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, back in late October when we were preaching a revival there for D.D. Etchison, where the congregation is led by Reverend David Cook, and I had to spend the night there, and we went to bed, David Cook and I, he, I thought, had locked up, but I woke up the next morning and found that there were no locks. The doors were unlocked. In fact, one of the front doors was wide open. And the next night I felt very good that I could be in a place, sleep in a place where we did not have to lock ourselves in. That was a strange feeling, but a welcome feeling. We go through life, and this life, learning how to protect ourselves from the ills of this world. And we sort of learn from the street, or from others' experience, on how to go about responding to the ills, or the evil, or the wickedness, or those things that causes us harm or discomfort. We go about learning how to adjust our living and how we respond to those difficult circumstances and our people in our lives. And it occurred to me as we were studying in this past week's lessons that we have on Tuesday night Bible class as well as in our Silver Feathers um, study on Thursday. We are studying an Advent study. Uh, it's a book called Christmas, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. It is written by Richard B. Wilkie. And in the first chapter, of which we discussed on Tuesday night and on Thursday morning, discusses this Herod, this Herod, and why we should keep Herod in our Christmas story, why God saw fit for Herod, a man like him, to be a part of the Christmas story. 
why God would allow such a person of such character to be in a place of authority to do the things that is recorded not only in the Bible but secular history records him to be a very vicious man, a murderer, a very evil man, a very sinful man, a man that would come to kill his wife, a man would come to murder his own sons, a man that would do such things that we would probably never think about doing, but on principle have it crossed our mind. Herod in the Christmas story and, and, and why it is important for us to keep him in the Christmas story is that he epitomizes and represents that which is symptomatic of that which is evil or sin or wickedness as facilitated by self Pride. In the book we're reading, and it's a good book that we're reading and studying, it may mention that among other things that Herod did, he had a mountain build. And he had his living quarters or his palace built upon this mountain, a mountain that would ensure that his living space or palace would be higher than the temple that he had erected. Sort of makes you think about how Satan himself out of pride said that he would exalt his kingdom above the very stars of God. Herod represents that which we come across we react to, we lock our doors because of, we cry over, we fret over. Herod epitomizes and represents that evilness, that wickedness, that sin in our lives. Herod is just that of which we have come to fear that of which we have come to live with, that of which we face outside of these walls as well as inside of these walls. Herod is that which causes us to hate our brothers and sisters. Herod is that of which we do not want to forgive our brothers and sisters. Herod is that we with greed and envy choose to rob from our brothers and sisters. That Herod in us as well as outside of us causes us to do everything and anything that is contrary to the will of God. Herod, Herod, Herod. Do you know somebody that is a Herod? Mm -hmm. Have you had to deal with someone who is ruthless, who is a murderer, who is a liar, who is a thief? Have you ever had to deal with or be in circumstances where the evilness of this world and the sin of this world sort of makes you don't want to go outside? Huh? Are you suffering from anxiety? Are you suffering from depression? Because there are Herod's in your life. There are Herod situations that you can't explain. Probably you caused it. Maybe you did not. But still in all, you're going through it. You're going through the Herod times in your life. You're going through seasons of which you don't want to be in because Herod is there. Herod is seeking to destroy you. Herod is seeking to mash you down. Herod is seeking to divide you from your family. Herod is seeking you. 
to take yourself and say, I'm not worth living. Hmm? Herod does that to us. Sin does that to us. Sin does that to us when we look at our brothers and sisters and because they may have a different hue of skin that we discriminate against them one way or the other, which causes our police department to act differently because of our skin color. I'm with the football player from the New Orleans Saints that says that we're not just talking about a skin problem, we're talking about a sin problem. I am with him right there because that which is system symptomatic of the root cause of sin is the heritage in our lives. Hmm? Maybe you can look out and point out that that's a heritage. She's a heritage. He's a heritage. Your boss at work is a heritage. Hmm, maybe you're right and maybe you're wrong. We don't know. But have you taken a good look in the mirror? Mm -hmm. Because Herod may be like you and me. At one time or another, we all have been Herod. That is per the Bible. Because we need to remember what God's word says about all of us in Romans 3 and 23, that we all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We all have been like Herod. And we may be Herod to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it is careful. We ought to be careful about who we call Herod and what we term as Herod in our lives. All the difficulty that we are facing is the result of sin. It is sin or the consequences of sin. That is the world in which we live in. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that it is Herod. It is the herods in our lives, it is the herods of circumstances in our lives that brings us to the point here that God in his holy word would include Herod in his story about what we call Christmas and the good news of the Christmas story that Herod representing the bad and the ugly is much needed in our lives. Hmm? How do you say that, preacher? Well, let's see here. If we turn to Daniel, the second chapter, the 21st verse, we will understand from that information that Daniel gives that God is responsible for setting up who is king and who is not king. God is also responsible for the seasons in our lives, the changing of the season in our lives. It is the divine sovereignty of God of whatever goes on in our lives. It is not out of the control of God. So the herods that we have in our lives is because we have God as our God. He is responsible for the dry seasons in our lives. He is responsible for the rainy season in our lives. He is responsible for allowing the errors in our lives to cause us pain, to cause us hurt, to cause us disappointment. God is responsible. God is in control. God is sovereign. Yes, things will happen to us. Yes. We will go through, Ecclesiastes tells us, it's not a matter of if things will happen to us that are distasteful, but it is when things happen to us, whether or not we respond properly with it, whether or not we give thanks in all circumstances to a God who is allowing the Herods in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is Herod who does that, but don't take it too hard. Because God has a way of taking that which is Herod and taking that and twisting it into something very good. You remember what Joseph said huh, in the 50th chapter all along about the 20th verse. He says that you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Does not only save myself, but save his people alive. Huh? And that certainly does remind us hmm, that in Romans 8 
28 and 28 that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called to his purpose. Isn't that something? How God can take the errors of our lives and turn it into something good. That God is either trying to teach us something. God is either disciplining us of, of, of something. And God is refining us. That the errors of our lives, the bad circumstances of our lives are all working together. To perfect us. I'm not going to keep you too long. I'm not going to keep you too long because I know that you might be hungry. The Cowboys won on Thursday night. Huh? Yes, they did. Huh? Huh? That was... I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. But we understand that God is in control of all the things that happen to us. He's even in control of when we make our decisions that are contrary to God. We all will make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We who live in this world where we have to lock ourselves in, where we have to watch and be careful about where we park and whether people will break in our car door glasses or whatever, we all, this is nothing new under the sun. Uh -huh. Evil has always existed since about day eight of God's creation, hmm? where we had the perfect man and the perfect